is to protect my mind from sin, to protect my heart from sin, my mouth from sin that's covered up by this mask, by this helmet, to protect my eyes from sin that are covered up by this mask, from this helmet. See, this mask, this helmet, protects my body. It protects my mind. And the Bible is clear about what we're supposed to do with our minds. It says, have the minds of Christ. Okay? That's pretty hard. God, Christ was pretty perfect, right? But when we accept Jesus, we're supposed to have the minds of Christ. The Bible is pretty clear about this. The Bible says to not think of earthly things, but to dwell on heavenly things. Alright? The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. You got your better. A lot of us go into battle without our offensive weapon. And maybe it's because they feel like a preacher is trying to convince them that they have to do something. Maybe they think a preacher is like trying to sell them a product, like a, a telecommercial or something like that. But what they will listen to, I'll tell you tonight, what your friends will listen to is your words. They can be very powerful because you're not trying to convince them to buy a product. You're saying, I bought the product. I accepted Jesus in my heart, and he did this for me, and he did this for me. He gave me peace like I've never experienced before. He gave me joy. He gave me love. All of these, these things I have felt. That's what God has done for me. So I'm going to ask you constantly tonight, what is your testimony? What are your testimonies? What has God done in your life? What is he doing? The Bible is full of testimonies. This Bible is a testimony of what God has done. His testimony, Christ's testimony, declares to God because of what he did for me. And you can argue everything in the Bible with me if you want. And I might not know all the facts and all the particulars of every story in the Bible. And might not be able to argue as well as you want me to argue with. But I believe there is a God. I believe he sent his son Christ. I believe he's filled me with the Holy Spirit because I've experienced it. It's mine. It's my story. And you can't take that away. We all have to have a story to share with other people. That's what God calls us to do. And if I love God more than my fear of witnessing, then I will witness. Why does a mom run into a burning house to get her baby that's burning in the house? It's because her love for her children is bigger than her fear of other people. Is your love for God bigger than your fear of the people sitting next to you? And I want to share my heart with you. I want to share my heart, my passion to reach the lost. Guys, I know how we act on a basketball court. And we come in here and we hug our friends from our youth group. And then we go out on the basketball court and we're talking trash. And we're putting people down in our cabinets. If people in this tabernacle grab God's heart from the lost, lives will be changed. Really, you see that whole person hurting. And you cling to them, you run to them, you champion the underdog. You champion the person in your youth group that's made fun of, that's hurting. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit. It changes the way that we see things. And it's an awesome thing. Whatever obstacle you brought with you into this tabernacle would be gone by the end of the night. Right? That's a big thing. You can stand here and watch them run around. Because when we watch them run around, we see them taking the baton for us. Alright, that's a holy thing because our theme is all for one, one for all. We don't walk this road alone. We walk this road together. These guys are helping pull our weight. All the people that carried around bags of trash during this afternoon come up to the front tonight. Our bags of trash just stand up here. These people, around 2.30 today, I gave them trash bags. This in here is your leftovers from lunch, all right? All these bags hold your leftovers, and they were supposed to carry these wherever they went. And I'm going to ask you a question. You can be as brief or as long as you want. I want you to answer this. Uh, what was your experience? What did people say to you? Where were the different places that you carried these bags? And I can... Already smells up here. Right, it's pretty good. Right? He hits these bags of trash. The rain. Alright, so go ahead. Someone can tell us a little bit about the bags of trash. My bag needs milk. And uh, when I took it out and played volleyball with me, 
the milk sour. So now it really smells bad. Way to put an air freshener on top of it. It wasn't very fun. It wouldn't have been so bad if it didn't milk. Since it didn't milk, I didn't hear it like this. But, I don't know, it just wasn't very fun. Um, my bag smells like tacos, <laughs> and I think I smell like tacos now too. I smell like tacos all day. You guys have these bags in your prayer circles. You brought them to this tabernacle to get them. You went and played volleyball in the back of the back. You had your bag. You went to your cabin with us. Some people might have showered with their bags of trash. That's pretty nasty stuff, because I'll tell you what. I've never done this, but I can just imagine when water starts hitting this taco salad and milk, it gets pretty rain. Now, I know this is a kind of dumb illustration, but I want you to know there's a lot of people that brought nasty, stinking bags of trash with them to the tavern right? And they're not up here. Right? We do this all the time, everywhere we went. If you brought, there's people here that kind of brought distractions from their cabin. There's a big old fight going on. You probably already have plans to meet next to a tree and, and do it out. And that's a distraction from what God wants to do with your baggage. There's people that are already, the thing that they're thinking about is what guy they're going to ask on a date or whose phone number they're going to get when they leave this cabin. That's the baggage that you're bringing with you. And it's rain. It really does stink because you might not think that people notice that you're bitter all the time, or, or that you don't have anything good to say about people, or that you're obsessed with something you shouldn't be obsessed with. But people do notice. It's like these people coming and bringing this to worship, and it distracts not only you, but when you bring baggage with you to God, when you have baggage, you're carrying it, you carry it for a long time, it distracts the people around you. And I want you to know, they have to carry this for six hours. But I would love to hear the story if they started carrying it on Sunday when we started camp. Or what if they carried it for a year? Think how nasty that would get after a year. Or five years or ten years. And I'm telling you tonight, people have been carrying baggage for five and ten years. And they have true freedom to not stink anymore. God wants that baggage. He sent his son to die to take all of his nastiness away. And that's what God wants to do. I'm not saying you need to listen to bluegrass, country, gospel kinds of stuff. We'll pray for you if you do tonight. But what I'm saying, but what I'm saying tonight is everything that we put in here should bring glory to our God, should instill Christian values, should lift up things that God wants lifted up. True love, true intimacy between a husband and a wife. Language that, that uplifts people. And I used to think that, that it didn't really matter. But here's what I've come to discover, guys. All eyes on me. Here's what I came to discover. That if I listen to stuff I'm not supposed to, it goes in my mind. And whether I realize it or not, I start to feel it. When it comes in my heart, I start to speak it. When I start to speak it, I start to do it. There's people here tonight that are suffering with anorexia and bulimia because they want to make other people happy. They want to look different for somebody else. God wants you to be free from that. Person that you're not forgiving doesn't care if you forgive or not. When you don't forgive, it hurts you. It keeps you from Jesus Christ. And you know what you can give Jesus for your salvation? What gift you can give Him for your salvation? Give them your sin. Give them your obstacle. Once and for all. If you doubt that God can do that, I want you to see this last scripture. Let's get to heaven. This one here. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say this now to this baggage, this obstacle, this roadblock. Move from here to there, and it will move. Saturn's blues Unveil our Father as you sing And my soul wells up with the 